All right, guys. So uh, we've got 1900 ELO here. Obviously, very high ELO. I feel like I could consider the 1900 ELO high ELO Legends content. I was looking at my YouTube last night, and I was like, man, it's actually been a long time since I've done, like, 1900 2Ks. Um, these guys are solid. Like, I think 1900 puts you in the top... 500 400 and i'm sure there's a bunch of repeat counts in there as well so uh in the blue we have uh Nguam. i believe this is a G uh, v vietnamese player and i used to play this player all the freaking time back in the day man i and this player's been around a long time uh playing as the britons and then in the yellow we have fly like django who is playing as the magyars i believe this is a german player um, again, like 1900 right now. I think it's maybe been above that before. I did actually lose to him once, and I, I remember that I lost to him because he messaged me about it. <laughs> and I don't remember what he messaged me about, but I remember it was like a reminder. It was like, oh, you lost to a 1900. It was like, great. He's, he's a good player, and he's got Magyars here, one of my favorite civilizations, so we'll see what he can do. Um, again, uh, you know, apologies that the scouts look a bit different. There's an AOE 1 scout mod I can't seem to get rid of. Uh, maybe because the T90 sound mod has plagued hundreds of computers and now they're paying me back. But that's the only time we're going to see anything different here. Everything else is going to look normal. I do think that if we're talking about high ELO potential, that the Britons are the best civilization here. However, I don't think there's as big a difference as a lot of people think, especially now that the crossbowman upgrade is more expensive. The Britons do have a mobility problem. I personally would actually prefer the Magyars. At least with the map gen we're seeing here, I definitely would prefer the Magyars. Magyars have cheaper scouts. They also get the forging upgrade for free starting and feudal, and that alone can get you a pretty big lead going into the late game. Yeah, uh, there is there are some pawns uh, that generate sometimes on this version of Arabia. So here's my whole spiel on a scout rush at high elo right now, okay? So... I've, I've been around for it all. I remember when the build order was 22 population scouts. That's right, 22 population scouts. It's just insane to think about that these days. It's so much slower than the majority of players would go scouts. And then it switched to 21 pop. That was like when you were cutting a corner, you would go to 21 pop scouts. And then eventually the standard became 20 pop. And that's still kind of the standard for a lot of people. Now here's the deal. The drush that we're going to see from blue, especially because Britons get all that extra food income, or it's like faster food income from their sheep at the start. So this can happen with ease. Um, this is going to come in rather early. And I talked to some people about it. I obviously play a lot. I've watched some games. And I think if you're going to go scouts, I think you've got to go 19 pop these days to really get an edge. Now, the problem with 19 population, some of you guys are like, dude, you're, you're talking build order talk. I, I don't understand. I, I'm going to explain, okay? So the problem, and I, hopefully this will be interesting, <laughs> is that if you go 19 pop and you try two lumber camps, which is what people always want to do for efficiency off a scout build, you oftentimes struggle. Uh-oh, scout running towards the TC. Alert, alert, alert. Scout running towards the TC. Alert. He noticed it. He's safe. Anyways, got to finish my point. Two lumber camps is awkward. That's basically what I want to say. So, Django's going to go for 19 pop, which I love. Um, he did push in all of his deer, so he doesn't have any scouting, so it's a big risk. And he's staying one lumber camp, which I love, which means he can afford the barracks and the stable at appropriate time. Yes, he's slightly less efficient, but he gets the army out faster. But now, look at blue, right? Like, this is a pretty sick build. He even collected 10, 10 gold. Uh, because he spent 60 gold on the militia. So he needed 10 more gold to be able to get Loom. And here he comes, and poor Yellow doesn't have any scouting. So let's see what Yellow's reaction time here. You certainly got plenty of time here, Django. Now Django notices this, and is going to finish that barracks, and now needs to wall in the berries as well. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to do this. Everything's going to need to get walled in. So far, looking all right here for Django. Yeah, 20 pop still works. It's just the, the key right now, guys, is the starting scout from Django has to get damage. You absolutely need to get this scout in to stop walls. 
Again, you're you're gonna be in feudal like 40 sec 35 seconds faster, is it I think? Because you went 19 population, and that might have been the difference between this being fully walled or not. So this is all protected. Now this villager should die. Let's see if Blue's got the quick walls going. And this is an awesome start for Django. This is precisely what you want. You benefit from rushing to feudal that much faster. Probably won't kill another vill, but you never know. And there's the stable. I say probably because there's another villager coming on the way. Let's see. That is a two hits away from going down, actually. But okay. Needed more patience there. So blue is going fast castle. That's the attempt anyways. This is like a blast from the past. And so Django will now need to make a decision on what these scouts accomplish. Um, I think it makes sense though. You can pretty much assume your opponent's going to be fully walled. To just try and kill this now. And then you can still mass scouts and worry about what you do afterwards. 18 pop scouts is... So I can't really think of a world where 18 population scouts is... What are you doing? He's going to go tower. Love it. Um, I can't think of a world where I like 18 pop scouts unless you're maybe Mongols. Um, I, I The fast archer builds are a little bit different. I personally think that any good scout build, you have the wood and the farm upgrade off of, which is why I say that. So like maybe Franks, you could do it because you don't need to research that. No, so now you want to look for a target. And actually, th this is the perfect target. You want to find the berries, or a woodline, or a gold, and you want to tower it. The blue has clicked up. Django's been patient here. It's just allowed these units to be here. And the scouts are going forward, and the villagers are going forward. Guys, this is a blast from the past. This was the meta against a fast castle back in uh, 27... Uh, 20... Mid-2018 to, like, early 2019. Also, Django, I want to barf looking at that tower foundation. Fix it. Dude, your opponent's in Dark Age. You've got scouts. Build it here, bro. I think what he's doing is he's trying to hide the fact it's there. So when his opponent tries to build a house or something, he's going to be like, surprise him and come in with scouts. Oh, the God. That's so... Oh, God. Just deny the berries, man. Django. No, I think the tower's fine. I think the tower is really, like, the, the idea of the tower is fine, but the placement of it hurts my soul. Okay. Well, this is going to give Blue a little bit more time, but Blue still can't go fast castle off this. And friendly reminder, I'm being I, I'm being a little judgmental. Judgmental 90 over here. Uh, we're looking at 1900s, right? So things aren't going to be quite as particular all the time. And now Blue's like, oh, oh, shoot. How do I damage control this? That was the idea of the tower, right? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? House. This is why... Uh, oh, what? The scouts get in. All right. The tower is brilliant. Like I said, it's the best tower I've ever seen in my life. All right. Spearman on the way from blue. Yellow is amazing with towers. Blacksmith gets denied. Obviously, will probably be deleted. Django's now microing. Kills another villager because of the amazing tower. I don't know. Maybe that was a good play. Like, I, I prefer more in your face because you're going to get in anyways, and then you deny the berries faster, but he killed three vills. All right. Scouts over here just chilling. Scouts over here attacking a gate. Blue cannot fast castle off of this. And now we've got Jenga running in to build an archer range. The tower denies the house. Well, no, it, it definitely worked out here, right? I think, like, the other thing that needs to come to my mind here is you, the damage control from blue maybe wasn't quite the best. The problem is more... It's more of an issue if your opponent has great damage control. Also, great decision to fight the Spearman here. Using the Villagers is also a great help. You don't want to be too anxious with this. Obviously worrying about something at home there, but kills all the Spearmen. Is making a range. Is now going to make a tower. Blue is to make a decision on if he counter towers this and decides to. You do not want to lose your scout numbers here if you're yellow. And that proceeds to happen. Yellow has forgotten about these scouts here, by the way. Would have been really helpful if those scouts would have been in here. Yellow, uh, now still massing some scouts at home, is over on gold, obviously, so some more archers can be created. And uh, the tower will go up, which will really harass Blue's woodline. That's Blue's only woodline. So even though Blue will probably shoot this down, 
Blue is going to need a new wood line now. So this is some great pressure from Django. A small thing, but I would love to see one villager come over here and, and wall in this tower fully so it's a, a factor throughout the rest of the game. Yeah, I'm, I'm unintentionally using the Age of Empires 1 scout mod. <laughs> so, sorry for any confusion there. I didn't accept to download it, uh, and I currently have it for some reason. <laughs> Django's going to be like, hey, I got more scouts. I hope. Django, you're going to notice that, right? It's the forgotten scouts. Hey, there we go. Yeah, Blue's actually fine here. Uh, and Blue's going to click up to Castle Age soon. And we're going to see this game continue, guys, because Yellow is very much stuck in the Feudal Age right now. Over here, we have villagers and scouts grouping up. But look at Blue. He's still paying attention to it. He's focusing down the scouts. This is some great micro from him. Getting so much value. Look at that. The villagers are totally distracted. Over here, the scouts are getting picked off. And here, the tower is going to get shot down. So I'm liking Blue's position more now. Let's see what Blue's military count's going to look like, though. Obviously, the eco is a little bit of a, a wreck at the moment. Also, my phone is ringing. Mm. Oh, no. It's, it's a text group. Hold on. Let me... I love these two, but we're going to hide alerts. That's my best friend. <laughs> I I have a lot of I don't really have a lot of text groups but I feel like every single one I'm in I'm always muting it <laughs> oh man okay so so here's the the next key for this game this is a great game it's army tracking so the crossbowman if we eventually see crossbowman because it is more expensive now than it, than it ever has been it's now 175 food and 125 gold Right? Is it 175, 125, or is it 175, 100? Or 175, 75? Anyways, it's more expensive, okay? Blue's got the gold to spend, so blue could probably get away with it. Um, but yeah, like, yellow needs to get to Castle Age, but more importantly, yellow needs to make sure that this Castle Age army from blue doesn't do damage. I don't know what exactly is happening here for blue, but blue's gonna add stables now. Which yellow cannot see. So this is like a random switch to knights. Which actually makes sense against skirmishers and scouts. Obviously doesn't suit the Britons all that well in the long term. But knights are still going to be more effective. Alright. Well two knights should be able to push this back. And I think what blue might shift into is to adding the town centers. You've lost villagers. You're going to be in castle age faster. You might just want to add the town centers. Yellow uh, is still still making a couple scouts here. Yellow's playing pretty open at home. And Yellow's going to see these knights and probably be like, crap, I did not expect that. How do I defend from that? Now, funnily enough, because your opponent doesn't have archers, you could make some spearmen. But I think your best friend here is walls, actually. Uh, buy time and then just wall in all your resources, which is not so easy, but it's probably the play. Town centers with what stone? He'll buy it. He'll buy the stone. It's a messy game. The market's your best friend here. Great job from Django to pick off archers, though. Again, it's 15 villagers versus 4. Or, pff, 15 kills versus 14. I don't know where my brain was going. Uh, this tower is going to get taken out, though. And yellow is now running away. Blue does not know there was a lumber camp, however. Blue's trying to fix the farming economy. Again, I think we'll have a close game in Castle Age, but look at Django's resources. Now, with these golds, I think you could consider an all-in. Like, your opponent, even if they add town centers, there's golds and stones forward. I would love to see that stone maybe saved up for a future forward castle. And maybe even go three stable knights here if you can get the resources for it. You get the attack upgrades for free. He did add some spearmen here. But he already has forging for free. He's going to get uh, Iron Casting for free, and these knights do not have enough upgrades to really be a problem. And so Django, who's getting lured away currently from his gold with these two knights, he's going to go for his own knights. Villager, doink, goes down. Nice micro from Blue. Blue still uh, actually making more archers at the moment and still didn't build the second town center. Also is walling in that archery range just in case. 
Monastery is definitely your best friend right now if you're blue, because you know your opponent's making knights that are stronger than yours. But Micro, man, this is so good. Yellow's, he simply misjudged it. He's just chasing with too much. That's such a nifty little move, though, from blue to realize his opponent was chasing with that. That's some great micro as the second town center goes up at home. And that's another villager dead. Well played. Uh, did the other knights go down? Oh, they killed the scout. If they could go home to a monk, this would be awesome. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. It's, a, it's so cramped. I hate it. <laughs> oh, I can't look at it. Look at the archer range placement, the market. <laughs> oh, oh, guys, where's he gonna farm, man? Like, I guess he's got enough farming eco for now. Oh, I absolutely hate the layout here. He's so cramped because of the pressure, and then like when he needed the range, he added it because yellow had scouts there earlier, and then he wants a woodline TC and a gold TC. He will have a monk on the way, though. And we're going to have the TC now for Django. So Django is not going to go for that forward castle. He didn't want to fall too far behind in villagers, which I think is an understandable thought. Uh, as he has fallen behind in villagers because blue is on the TCs faster. Again, like that monk converts a knight and it's already paid for himself, basically. And he can also heal up all the weak knights, too. Hmm. This is a great game, guys. This is a really, really good game. We're going to see archer ranges for blue. So blue still wants to focus on archers. It's so tough here. Because, like, if you make siege, your opponent then has knights. If you make, um, I guess, like, archers would probably be your best option, honestly. But you don't necessarily have the best archers. Some people will want to get to those cab archers with the Magyars. Not sure if we're quite at that point just yet. It's a light cav upgrade, so he's got the light cav upgrade now because of the monk. So if blue ever moves out, this could become a problem. Blue is not moving out. Worst TC in the history of awful TCs? Well, here's my question. Where do you place it? You've got no map control, right? So you, you got to think about it that way. You had no map control. If he leaves his base, his opponent is Magyars. So I, I think, like, he kind of had the eco setup to go three town centers for the villagers, but he just didn't have the position. This is also super smart, by the way. The knights don't really help your defense right now unless your opponent has siege. You haven't seen siege. And now yellow's like, I'm going to go in here and let's see if yellow commits. Now yellow should if he doesn't see the knights. Monks have to hop inside the town center. Yellow's now in and the light calves stay behind waiting for those monks. These knights have full upgrades, guys. And it, blue is also going to counterattack, which we'll have to pay attention to. But there's quite a few exposed villagers and look at that! Look at that! The light cap underneath the TC is awesome! Villagers dying here, villagers dying here. Monks still have many of like a conversions, but now you've got villagers dying from Django as well. So, I say this a lot, like, damage control is oftentimes what separates, let's say, a 1900 from a 2k, or a 2k from a 2k1. It's different levels of damage control, and blue hasn't really been able to, to perform too well with the damage control. Yellow as well had some similar problems, though it was only just a couple villagers there. Now you've got monks. Obviously, the monks could convert knights. Uh, the villagers can all head back to work. But the worker efficiency over the last minute, 33% there for blue. A painful situation to have to deal with, but you're still alive. We're going to see a town center for Django, and we're going to see a town center for Django. Let's actually see... Okay, so this is interesting, and it makes sense to me with the way the game flow has gone because Django has had a uh, more efficient economy. But now that your opponent's knights are dead, would really love to see a, p a potential siege workshop. But also, to, b to be honest, I'm going to take it back. Blue doesn't have that many archers. Yeah, like, Blue had, like, 25, 30 archers, maybe, but your economy is actually pretty good. Town center on the gold, town center on the gold, so he's protecting that. 4TC eco with knights is kind of like... Like, I dream about this stuff, guys. Normally, you need a combination of units. I guess we'll find out. 61 villagers for both. Sick game. Britons have an issue against mobility. However, if they can get that death ball... 25, 30 crossbows with a few monks in this case. Could be super strong. Ballistics is also coming in for blue. So he's got the three ranges pumping out crossbows. 
plus ballistics will be in. And it's very difficult to produce out of four town centers and also produce out of three stables. So something's going to have to give here. Either the idle TC time rises and yellow has more knights, which is probably preferable currently. Or it's the other way around. Let's see if blue's patrolling. Oh, I hate my life. Why am I watching this? Okay, here we go. The light cap go for the monks. This is the last type of engagement that blue wanted. Any other engagement he would have taken. That's the worst possible engagement. He probably placed a farm, guys. Probably placed a farm, and now all of his monks are done. Yellow's loving life. Odd Canera wasn't even in yet, right? I mean, it's easy for us to say, right? But, like, what you really want in that instance is you want to patrol. You need to patrol forward so at least your units attack right away. Ah. Oh. Django tried to run in again. Blue quick walls it, though. There's still army over there to take out. And now the monk's going to go down there as well. Bod Canero's in, but you can tell Blue is struggling and panicking because we had a Cab Archer clicked. Now a Siege Workshop would be really good, right? Even just to, even if you just park it on the gold, even if he takes the area back, it's just like, it's really annoying for the opponent later. That's why I don't ever win with archers. Yeah, like archers you really have to pay close attention to all the time. The Django has played this one well. He's played this really well. It's a satisfying one to see, right? Because, like, Magyars are not a civilization you see dominate every day at the higher level. I always love to see a monastery here, too, so you can heal up your weak knights. Gonna go for a ram. I'm not sure I love the idea of a ram. Manganel at least has guaranteed damage output to both buildings and units. But I do love the economy. In fact, I'm quite jealous of it right now. This is a very fun situation to play from if you're yellow. Yep, outposts all over the map is also really smart. Yep, Django has, has played this one perfectly ever since he got in with the knights, I'd say. And, and like, blue is simply... He didn't open with archers, which... It wasn't bad because the knights made sense. However, it's like you're not playing towards your strengths. And then that other ball of archers went down. And so you're just so far removed from your best army ever. Or your best army possible. Again, though, if you had Manganels, this is an easy clear regardless. I think he's going to clear it anyways. But, you know, just, just like food for thought in games where Django's not so far ahead, going for the Rams might be a questionable play in those like, Blue's going to fall back and sit in a choke point. And he can sit here until he sees a Manganel. Also, good quick walling there from Blue to not lose those villagers. Pikeman's on the way for Blue. Is massing pikes as well. Again, this is throwable for Django. Sure, Blue's going to lose one range, but Blue's still in it and able to make some different army now. And here he goes. He's going to back up again. So, like, now the Manganel's on the way for Django. Pikemen are going to hop out of the barracks pretty soon. We'll see. There's still, like, the crossbows still need choke points. Oh, man, he also made militia. <laughs> I, I think if you have four TCs behind this and you don't want to tech switch, you just keep taking fights. Just keep chewing up army. And I think the Magyar Knights with all this attack can definitely make it happen. You could also raid, obviously, like getting some knights in the back of your opponent's eco. Yeah, like now either the villagers die that are walled in or the crossbows die who sit in the choke point. And then everything else starts to fall apart. Tough situation to be in when you're blue because you need you need a death ball in most of these cases. He's also making militia. By mistake. Django's even making a stable back here. Sick. But yeah, I mean, really just needs to focus on the gold now and that cements the victory. About to go up to 30 villager kills. His eco is still completely untouched. But also follow it all up with a forward castle. Wouldn't mind a forward castle here just to cement it. But it's not needed. But yeah, I mean, a really... I know that over the last couple minutes, Django has, has shown um, that he's had the winning position. And there hasn't really been that comeback feel... That sometimes, you know, we, uh, myself as casters and you guys as viewers want. But was a really close game for a while. And obviously, like, there were some mistakes made by Blue. But, you know, when you try and play Fast Castle, 
into walls. The timings on the, the scout play and then the night play are always such an important thing. And yeah, there's the GG. Again, that 19 pop-up time, being up a little bit faster, started it off with a one villager kill. And then Django knew that he needed to apply pressure with a ranged unit of some kind, but it would have taken too much time to wait for the archer range, to go to gold, and to mass the archer. So the tower was actually the right play. Again, I think originally, if he just plops a tower down and his opponent sees it, he just denies the berries right away. He breaks in anyways, and he, he probably executes just as well as he did. But uh, it was a little bit of a surprise originally. And then, you know, falling back to uh, to defending was with the Spearman was quite nice. Just like a couple small things from Blue, right? Like, he, he was going to go Knights, but he lost three or four Archers, but then he wanted Archers later, and it kind of hurt that he didn't have them. Um, the Town Center placement, just because of how defensive he played, was a problem too. Uh, Britons can feel like... The cheap TCs with Britons on an open map can sometimes be a little bit of a bait because... You're like, oh, my town centers are so cheap. Let's use it. And then you later, you're in the situation Blue is in, and you just don't have map control. And your opponent can can do dances all around you. So, Blue was up to Casa earlier. What could he have done better to win from this position? Well, I'm going to tell you what I do there. And I think Blue would have really been in a better position. Okay, so it's 2054 versus 24 minutes. So we'll use this as a coaching lesson, I guess. Okay, so Blue hits Castle. First off... You've got five farms. You do not go two stables. You go one stable, and then you go three farms. That's the first thing. So the first thing is like overall eco balance. Now, obviously, his eco was really harassed, and getting overall eco balance right is an elo thing too, right? But so like that's a that's a mental thing in that moment. You've got to realize like, oh shoot, what? How much can I invest, or where do I invest my wood? That's the first thing. The first thing is you go one stable. In fact, did he even use both of them? Not really. Yeah, so one stable, right? You produce the same amount of knights anyways. That's completely fine. And then you have better food eco. Right, you buy a little bit of food, you get horse color, you mix in more farms, so your life is, is better. Like, even still, he never has two staples working. The second thing is like... You always want to be working towards archers here. Now, the range position is kind of rough from earlier, but, like, I think you open one stable and you keep the range pumping because there's going to be a point where the knights are finished and then you want a lot of archers. So, for blue, honestly, it was just transitions, right? Because, like, look. So, he's making knights for a while. Instead of, like, mixing in proper number of farms with eco upgrades, he eventually adds, like, he goes from one TC to, like, Three. So no army, no army, no army, no army. Look at the wooden gold. Britain archer ranges work very fast. If you have that one archer range working when he did everything else, he's got like 10 archers. And then that ball that he lost later was a set of 20. It's like 30 or 35. And then obviously, hopefully he takes a better fight and then it's a different game. So even in that early part, blue should get another range. No, no, no. I don't think he should add another range. He did have this one. So, uh, but that's a really tough thing for you guys to know in the moment. It's like, like that's a, that's a skill thing of in the moment you have to, in a messy game, say, can I justify investing into two stables or one? And off that economy, it's always one. And the key there is you want, you still want that killer unit, which would be your archers. So you always produce archers. So yeah. Um, the, the, the town centers were actually kind of okay. Like, I didn't mind that. Like, even the second town center is fine. But he just kind of, like, flip-flopped all over the place with his eco in a messy game and just didn't quite get it right. That's all. But, I mean, we're talking about the differences between, like, a 1900 and between a 2K. And, like, another thing is, like, you know, a 2K or 2K1 usually always kills these vills. Yellow should never get away with those villagers. And probably has, like, remember when the knights were running around Django's base? Could have had, like, five crossbows as an immediate follow-up to that and would have pushed Django maybe completely off of one of these resources. So it's just less balanced, right? Like, you've got zero army production but only bills here. You're kind of doing both at the same time.